Hey there, I'm Evie from Georgia. So, I look like a regular teenage girl, right? <laughs> Just you wait till you see what I can do. Kids these days are so rude and unruly. I blame the parents. There's just no discipline anymore. See, they don't even respect their principal. But no big deal. I know just how to handle them. There we go. Just a few words and the class immediately went silent. What is this, Mrs. Gardner? That trip was all we've been looking forward to for months. Thanks to everyone's disruptive behavior. Well, to be exact, thanks to the actions of you. 25 out of 300 students, no one has anything to look forward to this year. Okay, then go on, ma'am. Punish us. But why drag the whole year group into this? Other classes will definitely not leave us alone after this. Nobody likes being punished. That's why it works. Now, let's see what your peers make of this, shall we? The whole class was buzzing with, So unfair! Abuse of power! Wicked witch. Oh my, these kids, always full of energy. Go back to your seats and write an apology letter to Miss Helen, along with a promise to never misbehave again, or else. All of them reluctantly sat down. And there we have it. Oh my god, who are you? I, I, um, it's just that... These unruly students need to learn a lesson for getting Mrs. Helen so exhausted that she ended up in the hospital. And so you just decided to mimic me. Well then, please inform your mum. We will have a talk about this. Here, tomorrow morning. I glumly walked home as slowly as possible. As soon as I walked through the door, mum was glaring at me. Yup, my mum is Miss Helen the kindest homeroom teacher ever. However, the kids in her class made her life a misery, which led mom to get high blood pressure and end up in the hospital. I just wanted to help her, but instead, I just managed to make things worse. <sighs> Hi, mom. I'm sorry, but I don't regret what I did. Mom started lecturing me about how it was bad enough that dad had left and her students were rebellious, Without me acting like a crazy person. Crazy person? She means the times when I copy the people I want to be? But that's my hobby. I inherited that passion from my father, a famous special effect makeup artist. The feeling whenever I successfully transform into someone else is awesome. And it also helps me feel connected to my dad, even though I haven't seen him in a long time. It all started when I was 13 and Dad helped me dress up as my fave idol for the school festival. Dad taught me how to analyze the character and practice the disguise. Bold eyeliner, smoky eyes, contouring, plus the bodycon outfits. I looked like a real CL from 2NE1. My friends loved my new look. So over the next few years, I masqueraded into many different people, including Lady Gaga, Avril Lavigne, Miley Cyrus, and Sia. The feeling that my makeup talent was that admired and anticipated was just really addictive. Hey, is it Billie Eilish this time? Why not Taylor Swift? I love her so much. I've always done whatever I want and always been exactly who I am. Wow, you got that spot on. Are you a shapeshifter or something? Needless to say, once I imitated someone, I made sure I got their gestures and mannerisms just right. My talent didn't stop at awesome makeup. I was trying to collect things from my locker when a stampede of students raced past me and almost knocked me off my feet. Huh? Who was that strange and rather handsome guy they were chasing? Look at him swaggering. Does he think he's Donald Trump or something? That's Xander. He just transferred here. Keep your voice down, by the way. You don't want to annoy his fan base. Poof. I'm not afraid of those way too girly girls who go crazy for boys. Huh, <laughs> no one scares you, do they, Evie? Now let's go have some granola. Leo may like boring granola, but no thanks. I'm having a hamburger and fried chicken. 
Billie Eilish is not the type to turn down delicious food for health freak nonsense. Oh, there's that obnoxious Xander again. But this time he's all over Kayla, the snooty hot girl from my class. A boy approached me asking to take a selfie with me, then suddenly I heard a scream. What do you think you're doing? I turned to see what was going on and saw Kayla going ballistic at some poor girl who'd accidentally tripped over and fallen into Xander's lap. What on earth do you think you're doing? Take a look at yourself before trying to attract my man. Ugly doofus. How snobby. Did she think her beauty was that splendid to help her keep her man? But not with that empty head, girl. After a few days of research, I showed up at school looking just like Kayla. I'd perfected everything, from her blonde hair, makeup, clothes, walk, and voice. Honestly, this time I was quite nervous. Dressing up as someone I actually knew was always extra scary, especially when her friends were walking over. Wow, that dress is so chic. You really are the fashionista of our school, Kay. Come on, Xander's waiting for us on the sports field. Please, do you think I really want you around? I'm just taking advantage of you. And you, you keep following me around like a pet. It's so tragic. Are you crazy? I know you like Xander too. I see the gooey looks you give him. When I'm done with him, I'll consider giving him to you. I walked away leaving the girls freaking out. But I didn't say anything different from what Kayla thought though, right? If only she would be so frank with her friends. Now let's get to the main target. Thinking about him gave me goosebumps. I'm busy, bae. Go hang with your friends for now. He was playing Call of Duty on his phone. I was here to break up with him, but hang on a minute. This guy had skill. I want to have a go. Since when did you know how to play this game? Hmm. He looked kind of touched that I was showing an interest. Okay, I'll wait until after this, and then we will split up. I looked for Leo, but he didn't even recognize me. Poor him. He'd been searching for Billie Eilish since morning. While Leo was complaining, he helped me quickly remove my makeup so I could go back to looking like me before anyone guessed what I'd just done. From that day onwards, Kayla's friends cut her off so she could only cling to Xander. And from my point of view, he seemed to be tired of this clingy girl. Now even her look made him sick, huh? The time has come. I put makeup on his Kayla again and found him. I want this bag. Don't try to trick me with a fake one. Okay, as you wish. I want you to give up COD. That way you can only stay by my side. Okay, I'll follow you all day. I want to throw a party and invite the whole school. Your task is to get everyone to gather around me like they used to. If you can't do that, we'll break up. Deal. But I see everyone likes you. Right, Evie? Holy mother! Did he recognize me already? But since when? I have to acknowledge your talent. If only you hadn't shown me your charm, you wouldn't have been exposed. Well, Kayla looks like a picture. But a dull one compared to you. You have such a good eye. However, you're no different from her. Miss Helen is your mom, right? Don't be surprised. I'm a better observer than you think. Just like you. I know that Kayla was the instigator of the disturbance in the class that sent your mom to the hospital. I already apologized to your mom for Kayla's behavior. And if you want to know why I did that, it's because... I have a big crush on you. Oh my god. I didn't expect things to turn out this way. But, okay. Taking it as a slap in the face for Kayla on behalf of my mom, I still agreed to date him. The next day, I showed up again at school as Ariana Grande, simply because I wanted to. But this time, I also played another role. Xander's girlfriend. As usual, every time I dressed up as a new character, all eyes were on me. But this time, it was more epic when I walked side by side with the hottest guy in school. When Leo saw that I was with Xander, he rolled his eyes at me, then walked off. Then Kayla walked around the corner, saw us together, and started shouting at me. How dare you steal my man! 
you're just some pathetic wannabe. Xander took my arm and yelled at her. Evie's creative, sweet, and really funny. I want to be with her. I like her. Kayla's face dropped. Then she pointed her finger in front of him. How could you do this to me? I will get you back for this. Then she huffed off. Xander looked at me and asked if I was okay. Then he invited everyone to a party at his house that night to celebrate the fact that I was now his girlfriend. Was he serious? But whatever. It would be rude to say no, right? So that evening, I went to his party. To my surprise, Kayla was already there. So I flirted with Xander to annoy her further. Then suddenly, Xander leaned in close to my face, which made my whole body feel hot. What was happening? He... he was going to kiss me? But then he whispered in my ear, You haven't told me how you feel about me yet. <laughs> you were looking forward to this answer, weren't you? I... But before I could reply, Leo appeared out of nowhere, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. Ugh! What on earth are you doing? I'm the one who should be asking you that question. What on earth were you going to say? That I have feelings for you too? This whole thing is a setup between Xander and Kayla to humiliate you. Lucky for you, I arrived just in time to overhear Kayla talking to her friends about this dirty plan. Are you done talking? Do you really think I'd fall into their trap that easily? I already know their dirty tricks, and I was about to tell everyone what jerks they are. But then you showed up and ruined my plan. I don't care how clever and perfect your plan is. How long are you going to continue this tiring game of dispute? They think just because they're both hot that they can treat everyone else like they're puppets. Well, I've had enough. Evie, you're better than this. I don't like this revenge-seeking version of you. Can you please just stop it and go back to normal? Leo walked away in a huff and left me out here alone in the street. I stormed home and took off my makeup. Why was Leo so mad at me? I did nothing wrong. The gentle Leo I knew never had gotten mad or even went against my will and was always the most enthusiastic supporter every time I imitated someone. What had gotten into him? I called him continuously, but Leo turned off the phone. Ugh. I felt so alone, it was horrible. Then I heard a knock on my door. Mom peered her head around it. Seeing me upset, she came over and cuddled me. It felt good having her comfort me, so I ended up blurting out everything to her. Hmm. It sounds like Leo was just worried about you. But as for Xander and Kayla... They're not worth your time or effort. Don't become someone you're not just to get revenge on people who don't deserve you. But... Suddenly, I heard rustling outside of my bedroom window. Then Leo poked his head through it. If you're not tired, then keep copying. You keep following me around like a pet. Go live your own real life. Mom and I both laughed along with him. Then I hugged Leo and told him I was sorry. It's true that pretending to be someone else is exhausting, and I must admit I was wrong to use Kayla's name to sabotage her relationships. Tomorrow, I'll find her and apologize, even though I don't want to, but I have to find a way to end this peacefully. Then, I can focus on just being me for a while, without any of the drama. Hey guys, I'm Vanessa, and I want to tell you about my first love, so... Do you all remember your first love? Yes, right? I mean, come on. How could you ever forget that first time butterflies in the tummy feeling? Hand holding and that kiss? In the heat of first love, it's easy to believe this will last forever and be a true fairy tale. Only so many first loves lead to a messy breakups that turn into a nightmare. My first love was with a boy named Julian, but you'll have to stick around to find out if our love story was a fairy tale dream or a fairy tale doom. Julian and I started off as friends, best friends. He lived across the street from me and our families were close. We hung out all the time, so much so that our parents teased that we'd get married one day. At the time I thought, no way, but we were just kids back then. Then, when I was about 10, I started to look at him differently. He was so cute and sweet, and I thought about him all the time. 
He liked me too, right? I mean, he bought me my favorite candy, let me play video games with him, and stuck up for me when these boys from school teased me. And then when I was 15, Julian and I were at our favorite spot. It was a really big old tree in the middle of the park. We went there loads and would lean against the tree trunk, do our homework, listen to music with one headphone, read books, basically anything relaxing. That's when he told me the shocking news. His dad had a new job in Germany. And they were moving there. What? How could this be? I was so surprised, I started crying. I expected him to comfort me, but instead he took out a pocket knife and started to carve on the tree. When he finished, he said, Ta-da! How does it look? He'd carve J. Hart V in it. Oh gosh, he loved me too. I felt myself turn bright red and didn't want him to see me like that. So looking downward, I went to punch his arm but punched his face by mistake. Oops! Julian held his face and yelled, Vanessa, what was that for? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Julian, I, I feel the same, I told him. We both started laughing, then we pinky promised each other that we would keep in touch. He took my hand and told me, Ness, I'll come back for you, I promise. Then he leaned in and kissed me. And, wow, it was truly magical. And then he left. The first few weeks without him were the hardest. I didn't really have any other friends, and I was so bored and lonely. I lived for my video calls with Julian. They were the only thing keeping me going. Telling him stuff that happened at school, such as how my math teacher wore the same hideous floor dress all week, made me feel like he was still there. Things went on like that for a while. It slowly became a habit for us to have a video chat at least twice a week. But then a couple of days after my 16th birthday, things changed. It was a normal Sunday morning and I woke up and went to wash my face. Ah! There were red spots all over my cheeks! I screamed so loudly that I woke everybody up. Even my neighbors had to run over and ask what the scream was about. My parents took me to the hospital and I was diagnosed with a disease called lupus. For all of you who don't know what it is, it's a skin disease that causes rashes or sores. In my case, it was all over my cheeks. The same as what my grandma had. Worst of all, there was no cure. The doctors could only improve the way my skin looked, prevent scarring, and help me feel better overall. This couldn't be happening! Why me? When we got home, I ran right upstairs to my room and stared into the mirror. I'd gone from pretty to ugly in the space of a day. It wasn't fair! And then suddenly my phone rang. It was Julian. Oh no, in all the drama, I'd forgotten about our planned video call. I couldn't let him see me like this. I was so exhausted with all this lupus stuff that I couldn't think of a solution. So I just turned my phone off. I texted him the next day that I was busy so I couldn't FaceTime with him. This carried on for weeks. I just couldn't bring myself to tell him the truth. Then he texted me saying that he got the message loud and clear that I didn't want to be his friend anymore. I texted him back telling him this wasn't the case and I'd just been super busy. But the damage was done. He stopped calling me after that and even unfriended me on Facebook. And that was it. I lost my best friend and also my first love all because I couldn't cope with my new appearance. Little by little, I was shutting myself off and pushing everyone around me away. I just didn't want anyone to see me like this. Instead, I wanted to hide away from the world. Each day, I'd watch my classmates hang out together and I'd walk off by myself and go to my favorite tree, lean against the trunk, close my eyes, listen to some sad songs, and remember all the good times I had with Julian. This was basically part of my daily routine during the whole four years of high school. School finished and I moved away to college. Things got better. I made a few friends who accepted me for the way I looked and slowly, I started to accept it too. There was this one tree on campus. It looked just like the one back at home, so I went there all the time. One day, I was sitting there reading a book when this guy in a baseball cap started measuring the ground. Then, without looking at me, he said, Excuse me, can you please move? I was confused, so I asked, Um, sure, but why? The guy replied, Oh, the college is going to build a new cafeteria here, so we have to chop down this tree. What? 
They wanted to chop down my favorite spot on campus just so that they could build some stupid cafeteria. No way! Who was this guy anyway? And didn't anyone ever tell him it was rude not to look people in the eyes when talking to them? I gave him a piece of my mind. You architects are all the same. You never give a damn about what you have to destroy to build an ugly building. Leave this tree alone or I'll chop you down. Then I gave him a really dirty look. He just shrugged and carried on measuring. This made me so mad that I kicked him in the butt, causing him to fall onto the ground. His cap fell off and whoa, it couldn't be. Julian? Was that really him? But how? Wasn't he in Germany? Why was he here? And why didn't he recognize me? I mean, I had a different haircut and all, but I didn't think I've changed that much. Or was it because of my lupus? Suddenly, I heard him say, What the? Are you mad? What's wrong with you? Oh gosh, I'd totally forgotten that he was still lying on the ground. I mumbled out a, Sorry, and immediately rushed back to my dorm. That night, I couldn't sleep. Instead, all I could think about was Julian. He was so handsome and so tall. How could he have become so good looking? Ah, why did this stupid disease pick me? There was my first love right in front of me after all those years apart. But because of my disease, he didn't know who I was. He blossomed and I'd well, I hadn't. Maybe it was for the better that Julian didn't recognize me. If he knew this was how I look like now, oh boy. I didn't even want to imagine how embarrassed I would be. So, okay, let's just put it aside for now. What I first needed to do was save my tree. There's no way I was letting the college chop it down. I did some research and found out that the construction would begin in a week. So, I had time to convince as many students as I could to protest against it. And when the day came, I had about 20 people with me. We all held signs and said, save the tree and stop the chop. The head of campus, Julian, and the construction workers were trying to make us leave, but we were persistent. At the end, they had to push back the construction dates. One of us remained by the tree at all times, come rain or shine. It was exhausting and cold, but it was worth it when the tree was saved. Then, one day when I was on tree guarding duty, my friend rushed over to me and excitedly told me that the college was going to change the location of the new building. That was such great news. Apparently, Julian had told them that the ground was more suitable in another location. Why would he help us all of a sudden? Did he have a change of mind? I went to class with those questions that kept bugging my mind. And right after school was out, I came over to the tree again. And to my surprise, I saw Julian standing next to it. I walked towards him and asked, Why did you convince them to change the location of the building? I mean, we really appreciate it, but why the change of heart? Julian froze for a second and then said, I was sitting on the couch watching a movie with my mom and dad, when suddenly, the door slammed shut, and we all turned our heads to see what happened. Yep, that's my big sister Taylor making an entrance. She slumped down on the couch and banged her feet on the coffee table. Then, as she scrolled through her phone, she looked up at us and huffed out, Uh, why are you all gawping at me like I'm an animal in a zoo? Am I not welcome here? Flustered, my mom immediately replied, No, sweetie, we're all delighted to have you home. Then she turned to me, Anne, darling, go and get your sister a drink. I jumped up to my feet and did as mom asked. I know what you're thinking. Why is everyone letting Taylor get away with her Little Miss Rude routine? You see, after a huge argument with Mom, she left home at 18 and didn't come back for seven whole years. Mom seemed so pleased to have her back, so I decided to ignore Taylor's attitude and just go along with it. That afternoon, Mom asked me to go to the grocery store with her so we could buy Taylor her favorite foods, as well as a welcome back gesture. Then we spent ages preparing this delicious meal. I excitedly rushed up to Taylor's room and knocked on the door. Taylor, dinner's ready! She shouted back, Go away! But it's hamburgers, and we got a special dessert! I replied, Poof! I hate hamburgers, and there's no way I'm eating some sugar-laden dessert! I went downstairs and told Mom that she wasn't coming. Mom shrugged and tried to act like it was no big deal, 
but I could see the sadness in her eyes. Dad tried reassuring her by saying, She probably just needs time to settle in. Yeah, she's probably just tired, I added. Mom forced out a smile and thanked us both. Then she prepared a plate of food and asked me to bring it to Taylor. I knocked on her door and told her the food was outside. She shouted back at me. Take it away! I don't want it! I left it outside of her room, but later on when Mom went up to bed, she saw the untouched plate of food still there. She picked it up and she took it downstairs and made out like it was no big deal. She wasn't fooling me. I could tell that she was biting on her gum to stop the tears. When I was little, I idolized my feisty, beautiful older sister. I loved how she wore clashing colors, the cool ways in which she styled her hair, and her carefree nature. The problem was that she didn't seem to like me. All she ever did was call me a brat, slam her bedroom door in my face, and tell me to stay away from her. Seven years on, and I thought things would be different. She wasn't a teenager anymore. She was an adult. But nope. It seemed clear that Taylor hated me even more than ever. I don't know why. Didn't she view me as a proper sister because we had different dads? You see, my dad isn't her dad, as her dad left when she was a little girl. Then mom met my dad and had me. I don't know. I just couldn't figure out why she still disliked me so much. As the weeks went on, Taylor didn't seem to settle in at all. Instead, her behavior worsened. She played loud music until the early hours of the morning. She covered the house in her clothes, plates, cups, etc. She was the messiest person ever and never cleaned up after herself. One time, I came downstairs to see her sitting at the dinner table, munching on the sandwiches I'd made for school. Then, when I politely told her this, she snorted and said, They're gross anyway, so I'm doing you a favor. Then she took mom's car without asking her, and that meant she had to get the bus to work and ended up late. When mom talked to her about it, Taylor just smirked, threw the keys at her, said, You're out of gas, then walked off. Mom tried to keep calm and distracted herself by tidying up, so I tried hugging her, but she shrugged me off and told me to go away. It felt like Taylor could get away with everything, while I was the one getting snapped at for nothing. Still, Taylor must have been through a lot, right? Maybe she just needed some time to reconnect with mom again. Then peace would be restored to our household. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. I was reading in the living room when I heard voices coming from outside. I went to check it out and saw mom and dad talking to our new neighbor. They sure looked friendly. Then Taylor appeared and grinning said, Making friends with the neighbor, are you mom? Mom flustered out, Taylor, this is Bill, my old classmate and our new neighbor. Isn't it a small world? So, your mom's age? Whoa, you don't look like it. Hang on, didn't you say you had a crush on some Bill? I see why. It's just a shame you rushed into remarrying, isn't it? Mom and Bill gave awkward looks, while Dad was gritting his teeth. Uh-oh, he didn't look happy. Lovely to see you, Bill, Mom muttered out before she pulled Dad and Taylor inside. Behind closed doors, she frowned at Taylor, but she just shrugged and left. This must have been playing on Dad's mind, as that evening I overheard him question Mom. Why did you never mention this Bill before? Honey, it was just a slight crush when I was a teenager. You know how it is. Yeah, sure. Dad scratched his head. Now I was stuck in the middle of all this tension, and it was all down to Taylor stirring the pot again. Then a couple of days later, Dad came home from work and immediately started freaking out. The bank called. Apparently I spent an obscene amount of money in a watch store. Was it you? Mom shook her head. I didn't know anything either. Then Taylor piped in. Speaking of buying stuff... We do need to get something for Bill's birthday. I mean, he did invite all of us, so it'd be rude not to. Uh-oh. I know Mom hadn't got round to telling Dad that Bill had invited the whole family to his party yet. Dad gave Mom a skeptical look and snarled, Oh, I see. 
You used my money to buy your high school sweetheart an expensive watch? Listen to yourself. You're being ridiculous. I'm not going to stand around and listen to you accuse me like this. Then Mom stormed off. I really wanted to tell them how this morning I'd seen Taylor lingering in their room, looking suspicious. But how could I bring this up when the atmosphere was so intense? I decided I needed to confront the source of the problem, Taylor. When it was just the two of us, I said to her, I know it was you. I saw you snooping around Mom's stuff. She just shrugged and replied, Little Anne, seems you're smarter than you look. Yeah, I did it. So what? Why are you being so cruel? Mom and Dad might split up because of you. To my shock, she grinned and she said, Well, that is my plan. Why should you get to play happy families when I'm stuck here without my dad? What? How could she be so selfish? I couldn't hold back my frustration anymore. How can you do this to Mom? I won't let you get away with this. Is that so? And what exactly is a quiet mouse like you going to do about it? Then she shoved past me and walked off. I know I needed to tell Mom, but this meant breaking her heart. <sighs> I was going to do it. I just needed to find a gentle way of telling her that her beloved daughter got a buzz out of ruining her life. But then, before I had a chance to figure this out, something terrible happened. The next day, I arrived home from school to find Mom and Dad in the kitchen. Dad had his arms folded and a stern look on his face, and Mom was in tears as she sadly peered down at some papers on the table in front of her. Divorce forms. Wh what happened And you have to believe me. I didn't cheat on your father. Then Dad interrupted her. Stop lying. I can see it with my own eyes. Then he slammed a stack of photos onto the table. In the photos, Mom was kissing Bill in a cafe. Huh? This didn't make any sense. I don't understand. I didn't meet Bill yesterday. I met my friend Sandra. But Dad just got even more furious. Then he pulled his suitcase towards the door. Stop lying. I can see what happened clear as day. I can't trust you anymore. Then he left. Mom cried harder after that. I didn't know what to say or react. I wanted to believe Mom, but those photos told me differently. Suddenly, the door opened and Taylor strolled in, looked at Mom crying her heart out, and gave a delighted smirk, then went upstairs. That's right, Taylor! She must have something to do with this. So I kept an eye on her. As I passed her room, I heard her on the phone. And without a second thought, I went to find Mom and dragged her upstairs. Anyway, I owe you this time, dude. Yeah, those photos did the job. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Your Photoshop skills are brilliant. They look so real. <laughs> My mom froze. A second later, she pushed the door open. Then mom looked at Taylor and mouthed the word, Why? Taylor burst out laughing, shrugged, then replied, It's payback for loving her. She pointed at me. More than you love me. I want you all to suffer for living happily together. Why does she have you both while I have nothing? Furious, Mom slapped Taylor across the face and shouted out, I'm ashamed of you, and I want you to leave right now. Taylor clutched her face and snarled back. With pleasure. I hate it here anyway. Then she stormed out of the room, slamming the door behind her. I hugged Mom, and we both started crying. My happy family had been destroyed, and all because my sister was jealous and thought Mom loved me more. It was all so crazy. Then, later that evening, Mom received a call. From the hospital. Mom's face dropped when she told me that Taylor had been in a car crash. We rushed to the hospital, and the doctor told us Taylor needed emergency surgery. But as she'd lost lots of blood, she needed a blood donation. The problem is that she had a rare blood type, but luckily, Mom had the same. So without any hesitation, 
Mom told the doctor to take as much blood as Taylor needed just to save her. After the blood donation, Mom didn't recover as fast as expected. Instead, she turned weak and needed medical care. So now, Taylor was in the surgery room, and Mom was in the intensive care unit. This was terrifying. What if I lost them both? I called Dad and spilled out everything that had happened to him, and he immediately rushed to the hospital. The wait was agonizing, but when the doctor came and told me they were both going to be okay, and I could go and see Taylor, I cried with happiness. Seeing her lying there bruised and afraid, I saw a vulnerable side to her that I hadn't seen before. So I took her hand and told her what Mom did for her. She looked embarrassed and turned away from me and muttered out how sorry she was for everything. After that, I visited them both every day. Dad came to the hospital too to check they were okay, but he waited outside of Mom's room as he knew she was still mad at him. Finally, Mom came home. Then a week later, Taylor was also discharged. We went to pick her up, and even though Mom and her didn't talk, I could feel the warmth between them. That night, we were having a cozy dinner. Taylor coughed to clear her voice, then said, Guys, I want to say something. I know I've been a total brat, and I'm sorry. Mom, I thought you didn't love me because I was a reminder of your previous life, and I was ruining your new, happy family vibes. But now I realize how sacred the mother-daughter bond is. You never left me out. I left myself out. And Anne, I'm sorry I haven't been the big sis I should have been for you. I was jealous of you. But I was wrong to be that way. I hope you can both forgive me. Dad also apologized to Mum for misunderstanding her. We were all blubbering. And then we all hugged each other. We didn't need to say anything. Her actions were enough. We were family, and we loved each other. Families aren't always straightforward, but family is family, through the good times and the bad. And they're always worth fighting for, regardless of how out of this world annoying they can be at times. Trust me, I know all about it.